What's up, people? It's your girl, Adeola. Now, since when did common people, ordinary people of Nigeria, civilians, since when did we become monsters, killing people like goats? Eh? See, did anybody see that video? I couldn't watch the video. But just seeing the picture, ah, made my whole body shook with terror. Like four Nigerian students, young, handsome guys, murdered in cold blood, in broad daylight by the people of Aalu community, a village near their school, University of Portacot. Eh? Because of what? They said this guy stole a laptop and cell phones. I said, Kai! Everybody that was there that day, watching as they killed these guys, you know, know they fear God. Ah, which can you your laptop? What is it? How much was it that justifies such a brutal act? Now, we all know that such things happen in Nigeria, especially in marketplaces. But you know, to see it with my eyes made me cry. No matter what these guys did, this is not right. And remember a week before that, government killed more than 40 people at Mubi Polytechnic. Eh? Why are all these killings in Nigeria now? Every day is killing. I'm tired of bad news from Nigeria. If it's not Boko Haram, it's gunmen. If it's not gunmen, it's civilians killing each other. Eh? Yes, and please. If you are my friend on Facebook and you are from that community, ah, look community, I know we don't have any correlo, but please, ah, let's just unfriend each other. Je, je, ah, you know, ah, it's true now. Nah. Before you start accusing me of stealing Blackberry or charger or laptop, you know, no vexo, and this is not a joke, seriously. <laughs> but come to think of it, where were the policemen when these guys were being killed at Portacot University? And even when the people were killed at Mubi? Eh? More than 40 people in one night. Where were the policemen? See, one of the fathers of the guys that were killed in Uniport said when he got there that he saw the JTF, the Joint Tax Force. I said, how come the JTF didn't get there before the guys were killed? Hey, imagine a country with no 911 or any emergency number to call. And we like to say we are the giant of Africa. Hey, in fact, one of the boys at Uniport was still alive when the father got there. But before an ambulance could reach the place, the boy gave up. Seriously, how are we surviving in Nigeria? Ah, tell me, who is safe when policemen would deliberately wait for armed robbers to finish their operations before they show up? They wait until 43 people have been killed and then they show up. Eh? And when they come, what would they say? Ah, we are carrying out investigations. It is always investigation. Eh? End of story. For years, you may never hear anything. In fact, not a single high-profile murder has ever been investigated conclusively in Nigeria. Not one. The movie killing is more than two weeks now. Uh, the government is still carrying out investigation. Don't expect anything. The only thing that I trust the Nigerian policemen for is to collect bribe at checkpoints. I know it's not all of you, so don't write many personal letters. But most of you collect bribes and you can't deny it. Uh. And speaking of the JTF, hey, they are always telling us that they've killed the leader of Boko Haram every week. Every week they kill this guy. <laughs> See, last week, the JTF, they opened fire on civilians in Meduguri because Boko Haram killed some of their members. Even though they denied it, they killed more than 30 civilians. They are accusing the local people of cooperating with Boko Haram. So because of that, they opened fire and killed more than 30 people and they denied it. But the Meduguri teaching hospital confirmed that they received 32 dead bodies. Where are the dead bodies coming from? Eh? In fact, they had to turn away some of the bodies. They had to send them to Umaru Shewu or Tramodan Hospital. The local people said the JTF also burnt down shops and houses out of anger. Eh? And even though they denied it, what about the pictures that were taken as evidence? How can you deny such a thing? Eh, it is very clear, my people, that most of the time, the security forces are not for the people. And we all know that the government is not for the people. Now it is becoming clear that even the people are not for the people. Eh? So if the government is not for us and the security forces are not for us, why can't we be for ourselves now? Nah, why are we killing ourselves? Eh, my people, this culture of burning people in Onisha market just because they stole boss horror, used clothes, ah, this has to stop. Honestly, no matter what somebody does, killing them can never be justified. And how come Mr. President has not said anything now? Nah? Isn't the first lady from Portacot? Eh? And in fact, Mr. President claimed that he got his PhD from University of Portacot. And eh? as a graduate of University of Portacot, shouldn't he be more concerned? And the first lady also said she got her degree in biology and psychology from this same University of Portacot. How come they've been so quiet about what happened? But you know, I'm not really surprised about him not saying anything because, you know, it took him some weeks to say anything thing about the floods yeah so i'm not really surprised that he's been so quiet but you know my people let's start using the camera of our cell phones to expose some things that are going on and 
Take pictures and videos of the bad roads. Take videos of policemen collecting bribes. Yes, put it on the internet. That would teach them to stop collecting bribes. All the authorities you can think of that are going on in Nigeria. If you can, use your cell phone to take a video or a picture of it and put it on the internet. Maybe someday, the change that we've all been hoping for, maybe it will come. You know what I mean? I can't help it. I'm just keeping it real. And one thing I don't understand is how an old man can be wicked. I mean, how about at the age of 88, Mugabe is still as wicked as ever. Now it's like he's using voodoo, you know, black magic to keep his old self alive. Or how will you explain his convoy killing people because of reckless driving and over speeding? Eh? This year alone, Mugabe's convoy has killed more than six people. And you don't think he's using their blood to keep himself alive, young and energetic? In June alone, his convoy was involved in three different accidents, killing more than five people people and injuring more than 15 others. In fact, Mugabe had to buy brand new Toyota cars, you know, for his escorts. That was how bad it was. They would hit people by the roadside and they will keep driving as if nothing happened. I mean, what kind of president is that, that people have to run if they see him coming? You know, wherever he's going, he typically travels with an escort of more than 10 vehicles. I say, ah, ah, why do you need more than 10 vehicles, Mr. Mugabe? And then he would have his limo scene. Yes, so the presidential limo. And you know, he always has an ambulance that follows him around. Well, the ambulance is not for any member of his convoy, by the way. It's not for any members of his escort. It's in case he has heart attack or something. You know he's about to die anyway. But you know, he always has the ambulance in case he gets sick. Yeah. So even if they hit people by the roadside when he's traveling, he doesn't stop and let the ambulance treat the people that they hit by the roadside. The ambulance is strictly for him. The old man that doesn't want to die and yet he's over speeding. In fact, he's now thinking about being forever young. Let us die young let us live forever oh, yeah. we have the power and you never say never wow. sitting in the sand beach life is a short trip this music is for young men forever young i wanna be forever young Ooh, i really wanna live forever forever and ever young you know why i like americans I like them because they like to look for trouble. Yes, they will say they are doing research, they are doing whatever. They just like to look for trouble. Hey, even when there is no trouble around them, they just have to find it. Uh -uh. I mean, why would anybody think about eating live cockroaches? Hey, Kai, just the thought of it makes me oops, oops, please. Hi. This guy in Florida, Edward Archbot, he entered this cockroach eating contest. I said, hey, cockroach. Ah. And it's not like there's no food at home. This guy is even married, you know? So his wife must have been cooking some fufu for him. The ridiculous thing is, he did all that just to win a python. Eh? It's just ridiculous to an African mind that you are eating live cockroach because you want a snake. <laughs> hey! By the way, Ed had also entered a super warm eating contest earlier that same day. Yeah, so his stomach was already filled with worms. Oh, Lord. And then he went and ate giant cockroaches in one day, although he won. But he couldn't hold on the cockroaches. It's very sad. You know, maybe he swallowed some of them alive just so he could win. Yeah, just imagine more than 25 giant cockroaches, you know, walking up and down in your stomach. Yes, I think that is what happened. Right after the contest, he started vomiting. Yes, by the time they rushed him to the hospital, it was too late. <coughs> <coughs> I don't know if the cockroaches or worms killed him, but what I know is it's possible they triggered something inside him. Now his wife has become a widow. How sad. My people, don't get crazy about any weird contest. Like this guy, this Kenyan guy, can you believe he's going about trying to kiss one million women? Eh? I think he's going crazy already. Just because he wants to enter the goodness book of records. Eh? You know, by the time you do mwah, 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 with 1,000 women, you start having nightmares. Ah, trust me. And then he'll be running around saying it is his father in his village that is after him. It is not your father. Already he has kissed about 1,000 women. Gearing up for another tough day on the road to glory. This <laughs> is how John Telewa spends his working life. It all started out as a bit of fun. He kissed some girl, put it up on the web, and decided to kiss some more. Anyone who's just out there to have fun, I'll give them a kiss. 
You know this kiss thing was very attractive to some American ladies. Yes, until it got them into something they did not like. Any problem kissing our models no. to take? <laughs> you wouldn't know. You think that was fine? That would be fine. Okay. Uh, so that this is uh, a blind test. I'm going to ask you to, to go ahead and put a, a blindfold okay. on. <laughs> Okay, now can you see anything? No. Hold it so you can't even see down. Okay. It's completely blind now, yeah. right? Yes. Okay. Now what I'm going to be looking for in this test mm -hmm. is um, how soft it makes the lips, okay? The texture, right in the Jennifer, how did that feel? Good. <laughs> Before I leave today, I want you guys to see a little bit of Guinea Bissau. Some people last week I was like what people are actually watching keeping it real thank you all of y'all that showed some love keep them coming my question for this week is what needs to be in place before people in Nigeria will stop taking lessons to their own hands you know I'll read some of your answers on the next week episode all right y'all it's been real and I'm keeping it real right up in here until next week I'm gonna see y'all later peace out Welcome to Fossville Luxury Hotel. At Fossville Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24 hour power supply, full air condition, free international calls, free time pumping service, and free car battery charge. So, what are you waiting for? Quickly visit Fossville Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one at the Liraba Michele off Raja Rasaki Road, First Estate, Amuo, or the First Estate. For more information or reservation, please call us. 080-75-78-7135 or 080-99-90-0601 You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.forcevhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Forcevhotel Hotel experience the home of comfort. They come home.